three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Now this is a story all about how Peacock turned the Fresh Prince upside down. I'd like to take a minute to talk about this show. Is Bel Air a hit or does it fucking blow? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. That is the closest you will ever get to me rapping. This is The Real Pineapple. And this is your humble host, Hunter, here. So, I finished about, uh, let's say about two hours ago. Uh, streaming the first three episodes of Bel Air. Uh, that this is, of course, the rebooted dramatic version, which is executive produced by Will Smith, uh, Andy, and Susan Barowitz, who were the uh, original uh, producers and I believe creators of the show. Uh, this also has Will Smith uh, attached to it as well. He went ahead and I believe himself personally picked. Uh, Jabari Banks, who is uh, playing uh, the new Will Smith, as it were. And, okay, so if you listen to my trailer review uh, for Bel Air and my thoughts, I was really hammering home the fact that I thought this was going to be basically uh, (laughs) uh, Euphoria Bel Air, (laughs) as I uh, coined uh, in, in that review. And one thing I will say about this show is it's going to be a 10-episode first season. Uh, the episodes run about 45-ish minutes apiece. I, uh, the first episode's almost an actual like hour, but they range uh, mostly in the 45-minute range. And the big thing I kept saying about this show is I just felt that this was completely unnecessary. <laughs> And I and I understand that you know what is what is necessary anymore, considering we're rebooting fucking everything anyway. But this this is one of those cases where something like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, because it means so much to so many people, it comes out in ninety you know comes out in ninety one, you know really uh, a product of the post Reagan years, you know right before we had the. Um, um, why can I? Why am I blanking on his name? Uh, the Rodney King uh, riots and everything. Like it really was a product of its time, as far as being able to talk about uh, race relations, class structure. Uh, you know what it means to be black, as it, as it were. And it's an incredibly important show. But something that I've talked about on here before is that when you have, when your show or your movie is more humor based, you're able to bring in those dramatic elements easier, and it's easier to speak to your audience as far as being able to go ahead and actually, you know, inform them. This, the problem for me with making this dramatic is that this feel, like, even Euphoria has humor in it, (laughs) and I really have to, I have to point that out, because this show just feels, it feels heavy. That, that, that's the best way I can put it. It really just feels heavy at points to a point that it just, it takes away so much what made the original special for me, but I will go ahead and get into that here. So the show starts off with, you know, our new Will Smith played once again by uh, Jabari Banks, who was a newcomer. Uh, so, Hey, props, young man, you're getting paid. Good for you. But he goes ahead and uh, he's growing up, in, of course, in West Philly, uh, born and raised. And him and his mother, I, I don't have uh, the actress who plays his mother here, but she's great. Uh, for the little bits we get of her, she's great. And so Will is, they tweak the formula a little bit. So Will isn't just, you know, like a buffoon, which I actually do appreciate that they update that because Will is, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a basketball star. He's, you know, he's playing. He basically has a scholarship all but guaranteed. He is kind of a legend out in Philly. He's getting, uh, he's like a straight A student, which is something else that is definitely different from the original. So I do appreciate those updates, as it were, uh, to Will. And 
But here's where I think pretty early on the show kind of starts to lose me is that there's this there's this gangbanger who will uh, who will goes ahead and is confronted by first thing he says out of his mouth nigga why didn't you buy me a cheesesteak and it's like oh god all right we're doing this and, uh, will and his friend Trey which I do appreciate that they kept Don Cheadle's uh, character's name from the original show but I'll get to that in a second so basically this gangbanger goes ahead shows Will's gun kind of embarrasses him out in the middle of the street which is weird that you know everyone just kind of looks like oh my god will's getting this and so will here's the thing while i appreciate the upgrade to will as far as him being like you know very book smart like very aware young man the thing is for him to throw away his life because he makes a very dumb decision. Yes, we are all human, but it's much harder for me to swallow that pill when you make Will smarter. Because even his friend, um, uh, Dar- Darnell is the is the brother who, who confronts him, but even Will's friend, uh, even Trey, brings up the fact that look, man, like you can't, you know, you can't go popping off. You know, you have so much that you're you've worked towards and that you're living for, and and this is this is verbatim what Will says. You know, he he says that scholarship don't mean shit if I don't have respect in my hood, Trey, which is just such cringe fucking dialogue that it just made me go, ah, okay. And this is how the show starts. This is like the first ten minutes of the of the first episode, and so. Of course, you know, Will goes ahead, goes to uh, goes to this park, uh, meets this other gangbanger, uh, Darnell's, like, boss, essentially, tells him, hey, you know, you play Darnell and me, you know, if you, if you win, I'll break off 2K right now for you. If you lose, you have to work for me, you know, slaying them drugs. And so first off, yes, Will's an incredibly talented basketball player. But A, what part of you really thinks this gangster is going to keep his word and, and, pay, and pay you two grand, number one? And number two, if you lose, you have to work for him, which immediately puts your scholarship in danger because you're going to get caught. It's just a matter of when. And so Will so Will, uh, Will and uh, Trey end up winning. Uh, basketball gets thrown, hits the main gang bear in the face. He's like, motherfucker, I'll kill you. Uh, he doesn't say it like that, but uh, he says something similar enough. Will ends up grabbing the gun that Trey brought because they're just beating the shit out of Trey and things are getting intense. The cops show up hilariously quickly, by the way. I actually would have appreciated, I actually would have given the show a little bit of a, pa- of a pass if... Will shoots the gun, we see cops, or we hear sirens, and Will and uh, Trey have to run, and they end up getting caught. That would at least be something I could go, uh, okay, but these cops are here, like, eight seconds after that gunshot goes off, which I just went, uh, okay, really, we're doing this, fine. So, Will goes ahead and gets brought to Bel Air, uh, he is brought there, uh, by his cabbie, who happens to be Jazz? Uh, go, go figure, and and that's where we kind of get to our you know our base our baseline of the show. Will goes ahead and meets the Banks family, uh, the the new version of the Banks family. Um, uh, Adrian Holmes, who plays Philip Banks, Cassandra Freeman, who plays Vivian, uh, Ollie Sh- uh, Shulton, who plays Carlton, Akira Akbar, who plays Ashley. Uh, you know her from uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, Coco Jones, who plays Hillary Banks, and then Jimmy uh, Akingbola, who plays uh, Jeffrey. So let let, let me just kind of get in this. The way the Banks family has changed. Uh, Hillary is now more of a social media influencer, and she actually can cook, which is something that made me laugh, considering how inept Hillary usually is. But Hillary goes ahead, you know, she's a social media influencer. She loves to cook. Uh, some of the stuff she cooks actually looks looks fucking wonderful. And the best compliment I can pay this show from Jump is that Coco Jones's Hillary and Cassandra Freeman's Vivian, they do have a very I want to say I mean I will I don't want to say toxic relationship, but they have a very like they have a very like deteriorating relationship. Um, 
and it's if that's different from the show because so much of Hillary or from the original show because so much of Hillary's character is tied into daddy can I have a thousand dollars like it was always tied to that shit but the fact they're actually developing Hillary as a full-fledged character who wants to better herself but happens to be you know way into fashion which you know who isn't I really appreciate that and that's already my favorite thing about the show is Hillary and Vivian's back and forth because I could see that at least being interesting as the show continues to go on um and there's something that happens in episode two or three that I'll that I'll get into here uh in, in a bit um Jimmy uh Akimbola's Jeffrey He's from Jamaica originally, but ended up moving to London. I don't think they say actually how old he was when he moved to London. But uh, Jeffrey has a swagger to him that actually went, okay, I actually like the upgrade of him. Uh, Will and him have a short conversation about uh, basketball and we get, you know, we get a RIP shout out to, uh, you know, to the Mamba himself, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. And Jeffrey has some moments where I went, okay, I actually like the way Jeffrey is being uh, portrayed here. I wish I could tell you more about uh, Akira Akbar's Ashley Banks, but she's barely in the first three episodes. So I I know very little about her. She just kind of smiles and, at, you know, hugs Will a couple times and, and scoffs at a couple of Hillary's burns on the family. But that's really about it. She's really a non-factor so far. I hope they give her more screen time, but right now I I know so little about her. I I can't even tell you anything. Um, here's where I need to I, I need to go off a little bit. So Ollie Charlton's Carlton and Jabari Banks as Will. I don't see how they'll ever be friends. To, to be completely honest, because. Carlton is basically a supervillain in this show, and it's it's a it's a change, but the problem is how Carlton's written. Him being jealous of Will, I can totally buy that shit. There is no part of me that goes, oh yeah, that's bullshit. No, that that completely, completely makes sense. Here's where for me it really it really irks me. So Early on in the in the uh, in the first episode, Will is going ahead and he's exploring the uh, uh, Bel Air Academy grounds, right? And so he ends up in the locker room, and he sees <laughs> what I'll term a gaggle of white students with Carlton the sing uh, in the center of all of them, and he's singing to this rap song where they spout the N word with just reckless abandon. And these white guys are, and they're they're saying it like they're on a fucking bus chanting the shit, or like they have tiki torches. They're just like they're like nigger, nigger, yeah, like they're just they're chanting it. And I'm sitting here watching this, going, what? Like like I'm mortified watching this. And so Will, rightfully so, goes up to them. Uh, the loudest guy being this new guy Connor, who's played by uh, Tyler uh, Barnhart who's a pain in the ass already. So he gets into his face. He's like, dude, what the fuck? And here's where it gets very crucial because Carlton stops Will and goes and doesn't just separate them, which that could have at least been a place to to end it and go, hey, hey, and just separate them both. And then Carlton just leaves. But no, they don't stop there. Carlton flat out sides with Connor. And I'm sitting there going, what? And look, I understand that people have different beliefs and all this shit, but as a person of color, someone saying the N-word to you in your vicinity, even when black people do that, I I, I twitch when I hear that word, hurt with that word still. And it's one of those things in the show where I went, uh, okay, I really hate that you're playing this out like this. And so the movie or the the show kind of continues that scene because it goes ahead and goes back to the to the bank's mansion and carlton just immediately starts going after will and's like day one at bel-air and you're already playing the race card i'm like motherfucker seriously and the thing is on viv and uncle phil show up i want to stay maybe 20 30 seconds later and they're you know and they're yelling at each other and 
this would have been a place for the show to actually have the guts to have all four of them have this conversation. But all it stopped off with is Will basically going, you know, you're you're a fucking punk. Like you can't I can't believe you're you know, you sided with him. And so <laughs> It, 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 so the, Carlton even goes like it's just a word uh, he ain't with the culture and clearly you aren't either and I'm sitting there going really and here's here's what drives me insane they actually go here and they basically just leave the conversation Carlton flat out goes you're really flipping out on a word that black rappers use to sell millions of white people like Connor every day and you expect them to not use the words they're listening to look I have gay friends and I've had I've heard my gay friends refer to each other as the, the F word that I will not say I don't go up to my gay friends and go oh hey I don't go up to them and say that. So it's like, it's discernment on your part to know what words to not fucking use. So when the show just goes, oh, that's just how it is, you know? Like, white kids can't help themselves around the hippity hoppity, and the show just leaves it there, I go, you're pushing this to a black audience primarily. And for you to sit there and go, We're, we don't have the guts to have this fucking conversation and actually have the conversation. It... The the way that the the whole conversation ends, he flat out tells Will, "Kiss my rich black ass," and that ties to probably my biggest sh problem with the show. This is not <sighs> okay. I can't believe it. I'm gonna. This is gonna really upset some people, but I don't care. In the same way that we have not addressed the patriarchy in this country, we really need to have the conversation about racial. Uh, like we have not had a true, a true racial reckoning in this country because the problem is whenever we make a little bit of progress we want to go ahead and clap and give ourselves credit as a society and stop it there let's be real how many people were like oh racism's dead we have elected obama two terms in a row and what did we get right after obama so when people want to throw that shit out there which they do and they go well come on like in the same way that disney slash marvel making a Black Panther film, which, amazing, do not misunderstand, but that doesn't erase Songs of the Fucking South. That doesn't erase The Crows from Dumbo. There, the lack of Black representation is so far... It's not even close to how much Black people have not been represented. So, when I hear people go like, well, come on, like you got a Black Panther film. It's like, that's not... the Okay, let me try to explain it like this. When Black Panther is not a big deal, when we're getting films like that, that's when we know that we've caught up. Until that day, because let's be real, how many times were, like, just go on Twitter and type in Captain America. Look at how many fucking assholes are like, my Captain America's not black. Well, you know, the comic, you know, there is a run with Sam Wilson's Captain America. Yep, nope, doesn't matter. Nope, Captain America's not black. He's Steve Rogers. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you can hear that. You can see that shit online. But it's one of those things where I go, okay, why does it always have to be hood shit with people of color? Why is it always about slavery? Why is it always about us gangbang? Why is it always about this shit? Where's our black Indiana Jones? Like, we're just getting black cowboy films. Like, why is this so hard? So when you, it's constantly the same goddamn thing. It's frustrating to me. And I've been doing this for almost seven years. And this is why when you get a movie like A Moonlight, why you get a movie like The Last Black Man in San Francisco, why you get like something like uh, uh, Waves, why, when you get things like this, those films are propped up and celebrated. And that's almost ironically enough the problem is that we're not getting those films or those shows nearly enough. And it just really is kind of maddening when you watch something like this. So I've talked about Will Smith. And, and look, I've been a, fi a fan of Will Smith since The Fresh Prince. Uh, I owned He's the DJ, I'm the Rapper on CD back in the day. I, I have a lot of respect and a lot of reverence for Will Smith. But one of the things I've always talked about is that Will Smith, especially in the last, I'll be nice and say, 
15 years. It is Oscar a bust for Will Smith. That is all he cares about. That's why you get a film like King Richard, because is that about, you know, like celebrating the black experience? No, it's about celebrating this black father who went ahead and basically abused his kids. That's not cause for celebration, but is that something that the Academy likes because it's under the guise of a black celebratory film? You're goddamn right. And unfortunately for a lot of this, that's what this show is. Just because you have a cast of people of color does not mean it's a cause for fucking celebration. Because if you have all these black people in the cast gangbang, fighting amongst each other, not elevating themselves as people of color, and what the show is really pushing is that wealth is the end all be all. One of the, one of the great things about Fresh Prince as far as a show and uh, the original, as far as it being comedy, is that you could poke fun at the whole at the whole wealth structure and go ahead and talk about how that should not be the end-all be-all. But when you make this a drama, you give yourself less will room because you're removing the, uh, the humor element, which you can use to go ahead and kind of almost deconstruct your show, which works with a comedy, but not really with a drama because you don't have anything fucking funny happening in this. And it's really... It's really frustrating because when you think about uh, when you think about shows like Living Single, uh, which was also in the '90s, which was a great fucking show, it is on Hulu if you have not watched it. But when you think about something like Living Single, when you think about uh, a you know a Nick uh, a Nick Junior show like Gullah Gullah Island, which was incredibly important, if you have not seen Gullah Gullah Island, you definitely should. Um, it's it's those sorts of things where you go okay, like, this is really actually good, important ways to show black, you know, people of color in different avenues and different environments and things like that. But when we constantly peddle the the slave, the you know, the, the slave persona or the slave imagery, and that's all we can really get awards for and really see ourselves as, that's a huge, not just a, a problem for anyone who's a person of color who constantly sees those images, but that's a structural problem when it comes to our entertainment that really needs to be addressed, which is why when you get a Jordan Peele or a Queen Ava or Regina King, like that's why those, those people are so fucking important. And one thing about Carlton and Will is that from the original episode, you know, Carlton, you know, he's a fun, he's a loving kid who's invested in his blackness because he even taught, you know, later on, uh, like, was that season three or four when they're Will and Carlton are applying for that uh, black fraternity? He talks about that. And it's a really powerful speech, you know, like talking about, you know, that's something, you know, that's being black is something that I am. And the show in uh, that episode ends on that somber like, when are we going to stop tearing each other down? We're, I'm three episodes into this, and there's there's been nothing even remotely that powerful in this show yet, which is really quite frustrating because the writers really could have gone out of their way, which I really think they should have, to engage with Black conservatism without labeling it, you know, as white acceptance. But that's what the route that Carlton is on right now, because... The, the aforementioned asshole, Connor, uh, he goes ahead and plants some drugs on Will. I want to say it's episode three. No, episode two, pardon me. Uh, right after Will makes the basketball team. And the fact that Carlton is just like, oh, like he yells at him, but he's like, oh, basically like whatever, take down Will. It's like, you have to understand that's not just your fucking cousin. That is another person of color that you are making their climb harder because you're a fucking selfish person and the show just the show won't acknowledge that and carlton like call it what it is Oli Shulton, i mean the the portrayal he's putting on i mean it's it's dark as hell but is that enough i i i don't think so and as the show goes on um there's a uh there, there's this one scene in particular where when Will gets to the house initially and Uncle Phil is like, you know, I had to pull a lot of strings to go ahead and get you here and da-da-da-da. And 
Will just kind of snaps and is like, you know, fuck this. I'm going back to Philly. And so he tries to escape and he calls Jazz, uh, Jordan L. Jones, uh, who plays Jazz this time because he gave him his card when he dropped him off. So it's, it's one of these artificial moments where I'm like, you need to dig deeper. There's this point where Will, in that scene where, you know, Will goes, I can handle mine. I ain't never had no daddy. And, you know, I've been my own man. And Uncle Phil, He's just talking about, you know, know, a man looks you in the eyes. Like, a real man looks you in the eyes. A real man knows how to stand up for himself. And I'm sitting there going, we're we're the first episode in. Y'all barely know each other's names. You haven't earned the speech. And one of the things about the original show is that whenever Uncle Phil was talking to Will like that and would get real with Will... The show really felt like it earned it. You know, I could go obviously to the, you know, the how come you don't love me man speech, but Uncle Phil had a way of speaking with Will with conviction and really feeling like he cared about his family. And this Uncle Phil, because he's running for district attorney, it feels like he doesn't care about his family at all. He's really kind of running as a DA to the detriment of his family because you hear on Viv kind of fill him in on, oh, Hillary did this. No, I, I, you know, Ashley is missing on the milk carton and, you know, and whatever else. But the problem is because Uncle Phil is so focused on his campaign, he's really not around being a father. And even when he was running as a DA in the original show, that's season, what, three, four, maybe? But... You need to establish your floor and establish these characters before you go on to these plot lines that really scatter everyone out. And Uncle Phil's barely in the fucking house. Like, he's really usually out campaigning. And it it's, it's really quite frustrating on that aspect because we can't establish the camaraderie between the cast because we're spreading them all out so quickly. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but... Uh, Coco Jones and uh, Cassandra Freeman's Aunt Viv and uh, uh, Hillary and Aunt Viv, respectively, one of the, maybe the only subplot or really only plot that I really kind of care about right now is that Hillary, you know, as I mentioned, she's an influencer and she has this very prestigious magazine reach out to her and go, oh, hey, we'd love to work with you because, you know, Aunt Viv has a friend who pulls some strings and, you know, it's these two white people, because of course, and they go, well, you know, it's so cool that you're making food. And, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But, oh, it might be a little too spicy and maybe a little too, like they just, they, they stop just short of saying it's too black until Hillary goes, well, this is stuff that my family likes. My friend loves this. And the people flat look at her and go, yeah, but your family's not really our demographic, which I immediately was like, uh, you're going to say that in her fucking house, you pieces of shit? And Hillary would have been well within her rights to go, go fuck yourselves and get out of here. And it's just like, oh, all right. And and Aunt Viv has some nerve to get mad at Hillary for doing that. And I'm sitting there going, all right. Like, like even Aunt Viv's friends who are with her are like, uh, bitch, really? And the show just has these sort of moments where I'm taking, like, I'm tilting my head going, ugh, why are you, like, why are you doing this? Like, it, the thing is, and it's going to sound terrible, but I think it's the best way I can kind of put it. The changes to, to certain characters, it really... It really makes the depiction of black drama feel like just part of the equation that you can remove as opposed to a constant state of being that you have to be aware of. And that's something that the original show really showcases really well. And yet here it, it just it just isn't. And it's really it's really quite frustrating at points. Um Uncle Phil in the original show, again, rest in peace, James Avery, he, the warmth that he would feel with his family, even he was yelling at Will and grounding him and all that shit, like, he did feel like a presence, he felt present, and at the same time, I just, I don't feel that with this Uncle Phil whatsoever, there's this point where they're shooting hoops, and Uncle Phil and Will are having this conversation 
um, kind of tying back to the original, uh, the, the you know, him being arrested and everything. And they, they're talking about, you know, the system. And Uncle Phil says, you know, in my heart of hearts, I believe the system can be reformed. Will, because Will's read a history book, rightfully believes that the system itself is working exactly the way as it has been designed to go ahead and incarcerate black people and keep us at a certain level. There, that's a conversation right there that they could have. And that could be a five minute scene easy. And all it really does is Uncle Phil goes, well, neither one of us can stop trying. And the show just moves on. And I'm sitting there going, guys, you can't just bring this up and just move it to the side. And the show kind of does that pretty consistently. And it's it's really kind of frustrating. They've already introduced, by the way, they've already introduced um, uh, Lisa uh, into the show, um, who is uh, oh, who she played by. Um, she is played, oh my gosh, I thought I had it, but apparently I don't, uh, Simone, uh, Simone Joy Jones, pardon me. So she is Carlton's ex in, uh, this version of the, of the canon. And let me just say, is, is it, not, not trying to slut shame or anything, but is it kind of weird wanting to fuck someone who fucked your cousin? Is that, is, is that weird to anyone else or is that just me? Like I, uh, and, and It's such a weird love triangle setup. I think if you even have Lisa at the school and just have it that she hasn't dated Carlton, I think you can make the dynamic work, but it's just odd to have it be like, oh, well, now I'm going back after her, even though Carlton gaslights her like two or three times in the first three episodes to a point I went, all right, really? We're just going to just kind of move past this, apparently. Cool. Um... It's really frustrating, though, because Lisa's such an important character in the original show and clearly, you know, like, loved Will and Will loved her and all that. And outside of her being a swimmer and being on a swimming scholarship and loving, uh, you know, like, loving the swim, that's really all we know about her. That's kind of it. Oh, and she lost her mom. They They do that in a throwaway sort of line. But... I don't know, y'all. Like as I as I sit back and I just think about the show, and I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to bring up. Okay, you know, here's one thing. Good thing I will bring up. I actually think the score is really well handled. I think the score, um, I think the score is actually pretty great, actually, for the most part. But it's one of those things that as I'm sitting there watching, I just go, it's really a shame that there's not more surrounding this show. Um, that's elevating it. Um, There's this point at the end of episode one, which I I think you've probably seen teased in the trailers. Carlton has a drug problem, which is just, he's snorting Xanax through like the first three episodes, which, you know, all right, cool. But he, (laughs) but he gets uh, really, he gets really fucked up and takes Will to this party when he first gets in the town, like the next night or whatever. And, Will sees Lisa, and so Will and Lisa are kind of talking, da da da, and they end up kissing. Keep in mind, she's single, by the way. And so Carlton, fucked up, sees Will, charges him, and throws him to, pushes him to the pool. So they establish that Will can't swim. Plus, Will's wearing you know fucking like clothes, so you know not exactly you know helpful when you're trying to get out of a fucking pool, and so. Will gets saved by Lisa, and Carlton is like, Will is being obnoxious, or he's being, um, uh, not obnoxious, but he's, uh, he's playing it up, you know, he's fine, he's fine, and so Will and Carlton get into this fight that ends up getting shown on Instagram, and, you know, Uncle Phil, you know, running for DA, so that looks bad for him, here's what drives me insane about that, and it's one of the things about the original show that always kind of pissed me off, the Bankses really seem to punish Will more than they ever punish their kids. Like, way more. It's 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 not even a fair balance. And if this is going to kind of keep that shit up, I'm going to be really irritated. Because Will, you know, could have fucking drowned. And the show just kind of goes, Will, you need to go ahead and apologize to your cousin. And, you know, uh, Aunt, Aunt Viv just goes... 
well, I know why Will acted the way you did. What, you know, why didn't you act the way you did? Oh, why did you act the way you did? And Carlton just kind of goes up to his room. Uh, Will takes a drug test at a point in this show. I want to say it's like uh, episode three. And I'm sitting there going, okay, no one in the family is like, this could be drugs. You're in Bel Air. No one, no one thought this could be a thing. It's just, it's really frustrating. And I'm just going to wrap this up here because I, I feel like I just keep going on a rant about this. But I, okay. I rarely, I rarely am rooting for a show to fail. But this is just one of those shows, I don't know if you can salvage it. The episode, episode three, admittedly, is the best of the three. So I was sitting there at the end of episode three going, okay, Will's made the team. Him and Carlton have the rivalry. All right, uh, Uncle Phil gets to get, you know, hood, <laughs> you know, do some, you know, do some dancing or whatever. But th- this is one of those shows I just go, after three episodes, am I enriched? Is my mind changed about, man, I thought this was a bad idea to make a Beller TV show and, uh, you know, make it a dramatic uh, TV show. And to be honest, no. Like, it's fine at points, but at other points, I really just found it offensive. So, look, there's there's another, what, another seven episodes. I believe the finale is, like, March. I think it's, like, March 31st, something like that. Um, yeah, March 31st is the finale. So, they've got seven, seven episodes to write the ship. Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But for me, oh, that's the other thing. The, this, uh, the, the gangbanger uh, from early in the show, Dar- or Darnell. He he goes ahead and sees this post of Will on social media, which, by the way, is like 10 minutes after Will had his first Beller basketball game and hit the game winner. But he's already trending on social media. <laughs> like, I was like, really? All right. This is like a new story wouldn't be up that quick. Sorry, y'all. Like, uh, let alone that it would get back to Darnell, uh, to uh, not Darnell, but to uh, the main gangbanger. It, it, it really doesn't make any sense. And. It will make even less sense. So, okay, you know what? That's actually a way you could do this. If you have, uh, oh, what's his name? Judge uh, uh, Judge Reinhold. I, I, I think, not, not Judge Reinhold, that's not right. But if you had uh, uh, Sherman uh, Hemsley's uh, judge, who was, uh, uh, who was in the original show, if you have him be the one, because they've already introduced him too, by the way, if you, if you go ahead and... And have him be the one that discovers that Uncle Phil, you know, kind of hid this shit from, uh, you know, uh, buried the shit about Will and the gun charge and all that. If you have him be the one to bring the gang member over to Philly, because there's no fucking reason that gangbanger should get from fucking Philly to Bel Air undetected, considering the Banks family has already established the fact they have. Um, they have like 15 cameras on the premises. So if that's the route you're going to go fine, I guess that's at least an explanation. My worry is that they're not even going to go that far. So yeah, I, I, this is the last thing I'll say about the show. Cause I'm already seeing people on Twitter and social media go, give this a chance. It's not the original. It's not the original, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing, y'all. You don't get to say that you can't compare it to the original when the show is kind of consistently reminding you about the original. Even even Will's Inside Out blazer that they have, uh, it's in episode three. And it makes no sense, by the way. Lisa accidentally um, uh, hits Will with some mustard on the blazer. And Will's like, ah, damn it. So he's trying to, you know, dab the mustard off. So he turns his blazer inside out. It's one of those things I went, oh, wow, that blazer fits, you know, that blazer just folds in perfectly, and oh, wouldn't the mustard get on his white shirt? Nope, doesn't matter, shut up, Hunter. And it's just shit like that where I went, oh, please stop. And it's just, it does stuff like that a lot. And I don't know, y'all. Like, I, episode three, the ending at least made me go, uh, Rashad, that's the gangster's name, but it, maybe, Maybe they can turn this around. And look, if they do turn around, I will be the first one to come back on mic and go, hey, they fixed this shit. Like, good job. But 
to be real, I just I'm I'm doubtful. I I, I very much doubt that they are that they're gonna be able to write this ship. Again, I could be wrong. And if I am, then I will again I will come right back on mic and go, hey, I was wrong. But for where this is at, just for how much it did upset me at points, uh, God, I'm going to give this a C- minus for the first three episodes. I hope they can find a way to address the social issues better. Um, I hope the chemistry among the cast is actually felt, because I'm just not, I'm not feeling it right now. And again, they could figure it out, but for right now, the first three episodes... Uh, C minus, and honestly, that's probably me being kind because I'm giving, uh, I'm showing love to uh, Coco Jones and uh, Cassandra Freeman specifically because I really like. Oh, and uh, Jimmy uh, Akingbola because I really like their portrayals. But yeah, y'all, you, you need to, you need to, <laughs> you need to, you need to write this ship quick. <laughs> but I digress. So Bel Air. Have you seen the first three episodes? They're streaming on Peacock right now. Uh, new episodes are coming out every Thursday. Uh, so, yeah. What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, to name a few spots at The Real Pineapple. And don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. That's R E E L Pineapple, as well as Real Pineapple Games. And you can find me on Letterbox at Black Shazam, on TikTok at Black Shazam775, and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunterrealpineapple. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everyone. We will have reviews come up here soon for Black History Month, including Undercover Brother, Atlanta Season 1 and 2, and Watchmen, uh, the HBO series. So excited to get into those. But everyone, please stay safe out there. Wear your mask, get your COVID shot, get your booster, um, and tell someone that you love them today. Um, yeah, we need to hear that more. But happy Super Bowl Sunday, everyone. Uh, go Niners or <laughs> go Niners. They lost. Go Rams or uh, Bengals. I'm happy either way. Hopefully the commercials are cool. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, everyone. And we will talk to you soon.